some people say you should go for it you should follow your heart and try to make your dream game but other people say that's a great idea if you want to be a failure instead you should just make a bunch of games until you get good then you can start making your dream game. Personally, I've been making smaller games for a while now, but I think I've hit a wall. What's good, everyone? I go by Shinobi. I've been learning game development as a hobby for a while now, and I've still got a lot to learn. This channel exists to just share what I'm learning and get input from you. Now, before we begin, I wanna be clear. If you're brand new to game development, you're just figuring out how to get started. Making small games is probably the best way to go, in my opinion. Of course, there's some exceptions. Some people can bust out their dream game on their first try, but it appears that most people aren't like that. I actually started trying to make my dream game, and there's a myriad of reasons why that didn't work for me. Uh, some might call it a waste of time, but doing that showed me that I actually enjoy game development, so I don't regret it. If I hadn't started with a passion project like that, I don't know that I'd still be doing this. That being said, I think the main reason for starting small is you just learn quicker and you build a portfolio much faster. It familiarizes you with the entire process of making games by doing it repeatedly. You'll make mistakes quicker, but they'll come at a lower cost. For example, if the foundation of a game that you make is poorly designed and you don't see the issue until a year into development, it costs you more time than if you made that same mistake on a small project that would have been done in a few months. It's the old saying, fell fast, fell often. Now that that's out of the way, here's what I'm doing that's slightly different. And maybe this is just obvious to other people because I haven't seen too many people even talk about this, but I'm still making small games. But in between those small projects, I've just been going off and studying some design related things to make my games better. And instead of applying those design principles to new games, I'm applying them to my old projects first. I'll explain why in a second. But the reason why I started doing this is because in my experience, making small games has gotten me very familiar with the process of making a game. I can churn them out relatively quickly now, but it hasn't significantly improved the design of my games. So I got this idea from a Steve Lee video. If you don't know who that is, he's great. He probably should have way more subs than he has right now. So please check this video out and run his numbers up. But he specializes in level design. And in this video, he tells a story about how he realized he specifically wanted to do level design and how making an entire game to improve and demonstrate that one skill isn't the most efficient way to go about doing it. So he just started using games with level editors to improve and demonstrate his skill set. I'm just applying that concept to where I'm at right now. I've got a bunch of projects laying around. Most of them are unfinished that I can use to develop specific skills without having to make an entire game. For example, I wasn't happy with the enemy design in my last game. So I'm revisiting that old project at, that's already almost complete and just improving that one specific thing. So I've been doing this for a couple months already and the ways that it's already helped is learning has just been accelerated. Um, it was harder for me to go off and learn a design principle and apply it to a new game while also worrying about the dozens of other things that go into a game. So it just allowed me to target my weak spot and improve it and focus on one thing that I'm really into at the time. Um, I've already seen noticeable improvements on some of my projects, but I also have a hunch. Maybe someone in the industry can correct me if I'm wrong. But when I look at game development jobs, because I would actually like to work for a company one day, I see them asking for specialists and not generalists. And while it's great to have a broad understanding of everything, I'm betting that a deeper knowledge in a few things is probably more beneficial if that's your goal. But please let me know if I'm wrong. Now, of course, there's gonna be criticisms to this. Um, some of the ones that I can think of off the top of my head is like, why not just work on the design principle that's trying to improve in the context of a new game? And personally, I'm just a person that needs time limits uh, to actually finish things. It's that old saying, finish is better than perfect, right? I know it's not the best way to build a portfolio, but right now that's not super high on my list. It's also just not as appealing. Part of the fun is bringing new ideas in your head to fruition. And more often than not, I just deep dive into a project without caring whether it gets released or not. So this method might not be for everyone, but this is just what I'm trying next year. As always, I wanna hear your opinions on this approach and please go check out this video that YouTube thinks is best for you.